All right, so this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. Um, a YouTube channel, or I've done small blogs. I never really, quite honestly, I have a hard time finishing blogs because there's so much to type. So I figured uh, I would look into what it would be like to do a YouTube video instead, because then I can just kind of do what I'm doing and uh, discuss certain topics. And um, I, you know, wanted to focus in on, on two different things. As I said, something that I'm doing, I, I'm new to fishing, so I figured I would use that as a um, mode uh, of having discussion, while at the same time discussing uh, theological aspects of, you know, what what does the Bible say, what does Christianity say about particular topics, or um, more commonly, probably just what I'm going through in Scripture. So uh, I'm currently, you know, just reading through 1 Corinthians. Um, you know, and sometimes we'll hit hot topics, sometimes we won't. Sometimes I'll discuss the hot topics, sometimes I won't. There's uh, a lot of theological weight out there with different topics and uh, arguments within the Christian church, uh, which can get, you know, quite honestly, pretty infuriating that uh, there's not as much unity as I would desire in the church as a whole, uh, not as much humility, and not a, a, as much accountability within the church as much as the church likes to point out the sins of uh, those that don't profess to be Christian. Um, you know, we, we have a hard time checking in on ourselves and judging the church internally, uh, as Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 5, versus externally. And while discussing, you know, some sometimes important topics, sometimes not important topics, sometimes, you know, questions of where I'm at and, you know, what I'm, I'm trying to work through personally, uh, I can bring those things up and we can talk about it. Um, but while we're doing those things, you know, I, I want to learn about fishing. And honestly, I I got my first uh, mystery tackle box. Um, I don't really know anything about fishing. I know I want to get started, you know, get to know how to bass fish. Um, I am not an expert by any means at either theology or fishing, but I, I want to learn both, and I want to see if, you know, people are out there that, you know, are interested in both. If you don't know about Jesus and, and the gospel, you know, we can discuss what the gospel is, what it does when you get saved, and, um, you know, what to look forward to as a believer, um, and how to live as a believer, counting the cost and, and living that out, but at the same time, even just the simple things in life to enjoy, like Ecclesiastes talks about, Solomon discusses that, you know, we can enjoy the simple things, the things in this world, and fishing is something that I enjoy because it gets me outside. So, uh, if you're interested in joining me, you know, you can click the subscribe button down below. Um, I'll link to some of the YouTube channels that I watch to learn about fishing or theology and discuss different topics, um, you know, questions that I have and concerns I have about theologians out there and, and pastors and, and why we should question them. Um, and why we should honor those that are doctrinally sound and how we can do that. So uh, I hope you join me for this, um, and I look forward to getting to know anybody that does want to do the same. All right. So time to open this guy. If you don't know what it is. Mystery Tackle Box. Again, I am a horrible at fishing, so I... And new to it, and I have a lot to learn. I don't know what half the stuff does or how to put it together, so hopefully, you'll be going along for the ride with me. When you open it, this is what you get catch and win. It says one catch, two measure, three share, so they want you to share what you got out of the tackle in this box. It also gives you a little measuring uh, ruler for your catches. And it allows you to, you know, see the inches that, that you've caught with them uh, and what you can get. Also comes with a welcome aboard at the beginning of the box or the, the inside the box. And uh, you can see what's in there. It's kind of about, you know, learning of what, how you can learn more about bait, um, free credit from uh, MTB contests, managing your account, mobile alerts and questions that you may have. Um, that's all right there. Next, uh, tips and tricks from MTB, a uh, little game, uh, but also just tips and questions, fun stuff that you can learn about. 
Um, I'm not supported by MTB by any means. Again, this is my first time I've ever done anything like this, but I figured it would be fun to kind of go through stuff like this. Uh, it gives you a list of what's inside the box. You have Carl's Amazing Bait Hunch, uh, Catch Outdoors Zero Gravity Hybrid Underspin, whatever an underspin is, Sticky's uh, Offset Worm Hook, uh, Riot Bait's Baton, uh, Char Charlie's Worms Incredible Crawl, uh, so, and the prices that they would be worth, and then some contests that you might be a part of uh, if you want to join. Uh, if you review and win, uh, and want to join kind of for those things, you can see there's a website at the bottom, my finger right there, um, and then you can go to Shop Carl's for their website. But again, I don't know much about them. Um, I've heard good things. Uh, so, a couple of stickers. I just know that their smallest box is about 17 bucks, and the first one was for five bucks, and that was really helpful to me, because uh, I don't have a lot of money to spend on tackle. Um, and I think, yeah, it, it can get expensive fast. I'm currently using my grandfather's fishing rod and reel, so it's a spinning reel. I don't have a, a casting reel, so a lot of finesse stuff is gonna be done on there. So I'm to even finesse stuff. So if you don't know what that is, um, it's basically, you know what the word finesse is finessing your lures and baits to try to catch fish so i'm um, using certain motions in order to do that and again i'm i'm new to that um, in the bo box here's the charlie's uh, worms the bait um, this is looks like mini crawl and they're scented uh, medium texture high floater um, if I need to do that with a drop shot or float it on top of the water or what I need to do. So I'll probably experiment with it. So again, I don't know much about fishing. And, uh, here's that hybrid underspin airdrop. Um, put it that way. Um, it says the zero gravity airdrop um, is unique, a unique underspin. Um, it has traditional weighting and lead-free high-tech design. Uh, I don't know what that means. I just know that, you know, it, it says it's 40 ounces and I don't know what type of bait to put on that. I did buy, this is not a tackle, tackle box. Um, I bought some soft baits um, with a fish, UV fishing lure. Um, supposedly it's a new item. Um, I'll take one out to show you. I'm going to try these on it. I don't know if they work for it, but they're three inch. There are those, there's different colors. I can put some out actually real quick, just so you can see kind of what I will try out on it. And again, I'm new to this, so if I'm doing something wrong and you know better, please let me know. Uh, but this is kind of where I'm at, and that's okay. I'm fine with needing to know more. Here's what I will try on it and again those are three inches long um, sorry I think I just drew on there but I'm not sure um, next is amazing baits the hunch it dives zero to four feet uh, you can see that has the small bill in the front round bill take it out just so you can see what that looks like. Looks like the uh, minnows are, I think they're called shad in the lake here, so hopefully that'll catch me some good fish. Uh, there's a lot of weeds right now, um, and I get snagged all the time, so hopefully that will do a good job. Uh, next, the hooks. Like stickies, finely crafted hooks, three out. You can see those worm hooks. Um, just to give you an idea of what that looks like, right there, and you can see the offset on the back end. Try those out. And lastly, riot worms. Never tried these. I have some worms, but 
We'll see if these work better than the ones that I have. Some good color. I've noticed that the, the bass here seem to like more of a purple um, color with some glitter in it or sparkles. So we'll see what, what we can do with those. So try that out later. That is all for what's in the box. Um, as you can see, nothing left. No. So we will try those out and see what we can catch. All right. So the first one I'm going to use is the out of the box that is is the stickies finely crafted hooks uh, so I got that out I'm going to do as I said a Texas rig so I got myself a weight the hook and then I'm going to use these worms to start off um, I'm not good with knots I just learned how to do a palomar knot and that's what I'm going to use for this hook I'll be able to catch something good, and I don't even know if that's the best hook to use for this, or the best knot to use for this, but that is what I'm going to try, and we'll see if I can catch anything with this worm, or these worms, and this hook. Uh, I'm not too concerned about the hook as much as I am whether or not the worm will work, but we will see. It's a sunny day. Um, hopefully the water is clear, uh, but I am not sure how this will go. And especially since I'm doing all of this on video, it's both embarrassing because there are people around, uh, but I will get over that. Uh, but also, I'm not using a GoPro because I don't have the money for it. I'm just using a Canon camera, wishing I had something like a GoPro so that it would be easier to show you some of the stuff that I'm doing. Uh, but we'll see how this goes, as I said. Um, that tight. Moisten this up. Hopefully, I can get this line through. Again, I'm new, so I'm not afraid to just say I am new and I've got a lot to learn. So, I'm probably going to look like a fool for a lot of these videos until I get better and better at knotting these up. But also, I wanted to make sure that if I'm going to do this, you're going to be able to see me. Anyway, as far as some theological things that I'm learning while I do this, uh, opened up to 1 Corinthians 13 today, uh, this morning, and you know, talking about loving others, or the greatest of, of beyond spiritual gifts, the greatest of the three, faith, hope, is love, um, or faith, hope, and love is love, and just really uh, thinking that through that no matter what you're sacrificing no matter what you're giving if you don't love the people that you're do doing it to it doesn't really matter so um, I have three kids from you know five down to a couple weeks old and you know, trying to teach them the core things of what it means to be a Christian and loving others and you know it's, it's pretty basic at the moment but you know sacrificing yourself for others is something that they can start practicing now but it's a challenge you know you get a couple minutes of attention span and you're trying your best to, to ensure that they know what it means to love and how to do that and a three-year-old is only going to get so far especially when it seems like her memory is about it is pretty short and my five-year-old is um, still wanting things to be about her so but it is so important to love others to care for others um, and to utilize those spiritual gifts in a loving way within the church real quick side note so I'm putting this on I'm going to put the purple side up to try that out. And the first thing I'm going to do, I just learned this, I'm still practicing as I said, is put it through the tip right here. And wrap it around, get all the way over to that notch, the offset part of the, the hook, and find the area on the hook that you want to be, that it's going to pass through exactly. Pass that through. 
just make sure that because there's a lot of weeds, I, I try to make sure that I don't get the sharp end of my hook all the way through, otherwise it's going to cause a problem. So let's start with that, let's see where that goes. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, it can be a challenge to, as a dad, teach spiritually to my kids spiritual things. I'm going through Proverbs with them on a consistent basis. Uh, I do it a couple times a week. Um, and just try to hit the points. Nothing like talking about adultery to your five and three year old, but um, just valuing relationships and trying to make sure that they understand that love is sacrificial. Um, well, at the same time, you know, you, you talk to people in the church and you want them to know how to use their spiritual gifts. Um, you know, not just educate them on what they are, but that they, their motives in using them have to be appropriate. And that they're a part of the body, and if they don't use them, that, that the church actually dies or in some way or is maimed in some way because they're not using their spiritual gifts. Um, so we have to be aware of that, that we don't neglect the body by the, neglecting our gifts um, or at least being participating in the church. So many people today are just church hopping or think that they can get away with not being a part of the, the church, the body, and it's just not true. Um, they're deceiving themselves thinking that a YouTube video with a church service is enough compensation um, to be a part of the body with commands in Scripture not to neglect the fellowship uh, of believers and uh, not to use or to, to actually use our spiritual gifts and, and not say that we're, we're not part of the body or that we're not welcome in the body or to be told that we can't be used in the body. Um, if it's a doctrinal issue and, and you're... Um, your elders are saying that you're wrong doctrinally, that's one thing, but if it's just because you are uh, you didn't like the worship or you were hurt from a, a church service in the past or a church in the past that um, you're not willing to serve now, that, that that's a problem. You know, um, when reading through 1 Corinthians 13 kind of, uh, or 12 and 13 kind of discusses, you know, some of those points that you need to be serving in a local assembly, uh, not just the church at large and going from church to church, but a local assembly. But anyway, let's move on to fishing for a little bit and see what we can get. All right, so I'm not really getting anything on this right now. Uh, so I am going to cut this off. And I, I, I see a lot of fish coming up and jumping out for uh, some of the dragonflies, it looks like, that are out here. So I am actually going to change to some top water and try that hut the hunch out see if I can get anything uh, I don't know if I will but we'll try it out and see what I do what happens uh, I hope something happens all right so this is my first video I don't know if it was any good or not um, I don't know if I'll ever get any subscribers or anybody listening watching um, did try the mystery tackle box tried everything in it uh, didn't try every option or every way of doing everything a because I am new to fishing uh, B because I I mean it could be my setup my fishing setup um, without being on a boat in the middle of a lake that goes this deep um, maybe I just can't get out far than far enough um, I tried in the weeds, but I need to, to do some different uh, setups in order to uh, make sure I can get in there uh, without snagging every time. Uh, that's why I tried the Texas rig at first, and I'll have to do that again for the uh, crawfish, uh, which I will try soon. Sorry for the, sh the shaky camera at the moment, but uh, this is, as I said, this is all I really have uh, to do this. I know I'll get better at the video editing and the uhs and ums and everything, but this is this is what I got at the moment so uh, if you have any suggestions any ideas or tips uh, let me know I will continue to post as, as often as I go fishing or if I'm doing something with fishing uh, along with talking about you know theological things I do encourage you um, if you don't know Jesus um, to uh, you know open up the Bible um, and start reading 
there's a lot of books, particularly in the in the New Testament, uh, that I would suggest that you start with, uh, either John or Luke. Um, but you know, if you have questions about that, maybe uh, I think the next time I'll just talk about what the gospel is um, and what I would say uh, how it changes you when you are saved and what happens in salvation and you know what it means to be a Christian. But, yeah, we'll get there when we get there, and hopefully one day I'll be better at fishing, because currently, as you can see, I don't have any video of a fish. And I've come out to this lake a couple times. It's been pretty difficult to catch some. I've, uh, I've caught, or my daughters actually, I think have caught just about as much as I have, which they've caught four or five, and I think I've only caught like three or four. So, um, if you have suggestions for catching fish on Sterling Lake, let me know. Um, I am going to provide a map down below um, with the depths of the lake and kind of some, some known things, websites and stuff like that so that you can find more information about this lake if you're interested in coming up and fishing. Um, they do stock it, uh, at least that's according to the website, but that website hasn't been updated in some time. Um, so, yeah. Let me know if you have any questions or... Yeah, you just want to laugh at me because I suck at fishing, but either way it works, I'm okay with being laughed at, and I hope you have a great day.